Fuck. They had a TJ Perkins dubbing into 2K18. That's fucking stupid anyway. I forgot what day it was. Let's find out, shall we? Sunday the... It's the third of... I fucked it. Guys, the loaded was, was the 31st. Oh, God. Well, anyway, guys, it's Sarastic HQ here, it's Alex, and welcome to my very late review of WCW Loaded, 31st of August edition. Now, really sorry about this, guys, it's been, it's been a late review. Uh, I've been having a lot of uh, personal. Not, not problems at all, I'm fine. I've just been very busy in my personal life and I haven't been able to get this out yet. I've had a haircut though, so I don't look an absolute dick. But Loaded this week starts off with a bit of a recap from Stacked. We see moments like Osprey not joining the Prestige um, and things like that. I won't get into Stacked because we, I, we didn't really review Stacked. Uh, we ran out of time, me and Robbie, but uh, I thought that was an okay show. Not one that I'll go back and watch though for a very long time. I don't think I need to. Very nice, just didn't really have that many storyline moments that you need to go back to watch it again. Not, it's not really any of that, just for that outstanding either, in my opinion. It was just an okay, good show. You see Adam Blompier, the What Culture Person General Manager, and he is pissed. Um, if you don't know, at the end of the World Cup show, the World Cup final, uh, the Prestige attacked Kushida and destroyed the Pro Wrestling World Cup, um, the actual cup itself, at, at the end. They attack B Priestley, Will Ospreay, and uh, the South Coast Connection. And Adam Bompier basically says they're not going to go unpunished. There will be punishments for all members of the Prestige. But there's only three of them, and we get BT Guns punishment this week. We will have to defend the WCBW Hardcore Championship against the person that he uh, beat at Stacked Primate. And also he goes, uh, for this week, Joe Hendry and El Aguero are suspended in competition this week. But he will be out there next week in the ring to discuss their punishments. So the first match on the card is Drake versus Angelico or Angelico. I used to go to say Angelico, so I'm going to go with Angelico. But Angelico versus Drake, a really good match. Now, this is a feud that I like. Um, it's not really like a storyline feud at all. I like it because it's got these, like, it's built on in ring competition. Um, obviously in the first encounter, uh, Angelico beat Drake on Loaded this week. As Angelico was making his way to the entranceway, Drake ran up the ramp and uh, Angelico had across the body. That was nice. I just like the fact that the feud is built on wrestling alone inside the ring. And again, it's not going to be one of those feuds that's going to blow you away. It's not really going to be one they're going to remember, but it's going to be a nice set of matches that you enjoy. I really like the style and how uh, and Helico and Drake mesh off each other. I think it's really, really cool. I think there is so much potential uh, for their third match. I'll get onto that later on in the show. The ending of the match came in a really nice way to give Drake the win. So basically, uh, Drake tapes and Helico to the ring barrier, and the referee's counting. Um, and then they come out. They count nine. He gets free, but he can't get in the ring quick enough, and therefore Drake wins by count out. Nice way to protect those guys and to give Drake the win here because to go two, to go two zero to Angelico would not be the right way to go for Drake. Um, Drake is really, I really like Drake. I think he's fantastic. And we move on to a promo for um for Ashley Dunn and Kelly Six South Connection, and they're going. Everyone's wanted us back in what culture, whether it's via online tweets or people coming up to us in real life saying they want us back in what culture. Yeah, we've got our chance at those tag team titles, so it's time for either. Sad Succession to evolve or die, I think is what they said. So in this triple threat tag team match for the number one contestant for the WCBW tag team titles, there were the South Coast Connection, Ashley Dunn and Kelly Six. There were Moss and Slater, the Tarkin Aslan in his WCBW debut, a team up with Lucky Kid to form the Jordan uh, Lowen, I think that's how you say it, Lawan, I think. So that's how, I'm gonna go with that anyway. Tarkin Aslan and uh, Lucky Kid. Great match, really good triple threat match. Obviously, it's a return of Johnny Moss, Johnny Moss, Johnny, Johnny Moss. Da, 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 da. I'm lonely. Really high pace, nice tempo, uh, really kept the match going. A few spots. There was a nice moment really early on in the match where Lucky Kid 
was just going absolutely crazy. I think that's kind of his character, but in the ring, and then he turns around, Moss is there, and he's like, shit. And then Moss just absolutely, uh, I think he suplexed him. Moss are great in this match. Every, every, what well, I liked about the, the, the way the wrestlers booked this match was everyone got their spots and no one looked weak and the ending made sense whilst making everyone else look strong and still like competitors for the tag team titles down the line. Um, no one looked weak in the other here because obviously the Southwest Connection, they have their thing. They haven't competed in many matches, they're rookies still. Mox and Slater, they're, they're the former tag team champions, they can take a loss. But did you and Rowan, uh, the team of Aslan and Lucky Kid, they're, they're new to WCW crowd. They ha we haven't seen them team together yet. Um, so we needed to, they need to prove themselves here, and they did. These guys were absolutely incredible. We obviously saw Lucky Kid in the World Cup, and in this match with uh, Gabriel Kid in at Stacked, there was it was a great match. Again, Johnny Moss suplexing bitches. There's one moment where he did like a four man suplex. It was incredible. Um, my, me and my friend were watching it together today, and he was like, "Oh, that looked really weak." Uh, my argument was he's picking up four men, it, it, it still was pretty awesome for me anyway. Everyone's on the outside, Johnny Moss is about to jump over, but actually no, I think it was actually done, was in the way, uh, oh, it could have been Kelly Six, one of the South Coast Connection, I need to, I'll learn their names more as they go through uh, WCBW, but they're in the way, so Johnny Moss, instead of uh, like clotheslining him over the top rope and doing it again, picked him up, suplexed him onto the outside, onto all the competitors, it was really good. And then as we come to the closing moments of the matches, and I think more spots I liked was um, in South Coast Connection, normally they're like uh, five and carry kick. Um, Lucky Kid caught the leg, but then what the other member of South Coast Connection used the other leg, so he still got the kick in. Uh, so towards the end of the match, uh, Ta Liam Slater's on the top rope going for the diving headbutt onto Lucky Kid, but Tarkin Alzan distracts Liam Slater and allowing Lucky Kid to roll up Johnny Moss. For the one, two, three, and then after the match, Johnny Moss wasn't having any bit. Liam Slater was like, I'm like, I think what I got from it was like, he's going, I'm sorry, you know, he's just a bit angry, leave him alone, that kind of thing. Um, that's what I got from it anyway. And Liam Slater and Johnny Moss exit the ring, angry at the win. And uh, Dijon and Lowen were getting booed. Tark and Aslan and Lucky Kid were getting booed. They got cheered towards the end, but they started to get booed. So they were the team going into the match, and obviously that makes sense in WCW uh, logic because obviously we haven't seen them together. So obviously they were the underdogs. They won. I'm not bothered, but you know they're not going to win next week because WCW are already promoting for a few to lose the Young Bucks versus our WCW Tag Team Champions, the War Machine. I'm still looking for, excited for the match though, but again, was it the wrong time to promote the match? I guess they were trying to sell a few to lose tickets. But if you're going to put a title match on a, on a loaded card before the show, probably not best. Because we know that uh, Lucky Kid and Tarkin and Aslan aren't going to walk away with it next week. That's literally all we know going into next week uh, is the Adam Lompier speech and uh, the WCW Tattoo title match. It's looking pretty stacked next week, I have to say. This week was probably the least stacked episode I did, but it's probably one of my favourites. It's because it was nice and calm, short and sweet, and Helico. He's having an interview with Adam Wilborn, but he's having none of it. He goes, Drake, you and me, we've had a great feud. I gave you a chance to get another win on me, and you went against the rules. Well, next well, next time we fight, I challenge you to a false car anyway match. I'm really excited. Um, don't know what's going to happen, though. Really don't know when it's going to happen. It could be at Refuse to Lose, could be on episode of Loaded, because obviously we knew. And Helico was at the Loaded tapings, so it could be then but we just don't know. I'm really excited because WCBW, like when, when they go back stage and stuff, it's always funny. There's always like these funny moments, but I think this doesn't keep it predominantly serious because then Helico is pissed at um, your boy Drake. So anyway, let's move on to the third match of the card. Following what happened at Stacked with Bad Bones attacking Martin Kirby during the match Alex Gracie, we have Bad Bones versus uh, Martin Kirby. Martin Kirby's still over as ever. Bad Bones has this face mask, it looks really cool. Um, really good match, really enjoyed it. Like, it's my least favorite match of the night, but you can't hate on it. You, like, there was nothing wrong with it. it. Genuinely, it wasn't bad. It was really nice pacing. Uh, Martin Kirby does his whole little do 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 do, like, but then runs in after Bad Bones, attacks him, beats him down, and then uh, uh, does like a suicide dive to Bones uh, on the other side. And that's where the match really gets started from there. He rolls him back into the ring, and it becomes a traditional match. Just the ending where Martin Kirby went for the same bomb, and then nope. Uh, Bad Bones countless into that there's sort of future shock DDT but obviously he didn't do like the kicking motion that Drew did so it was just a DDT of a sense so we'll probably get a name for it soon 
got one, two, three, Bad Bones wins. But after the match, Alex Gracie comes out and hits the fourth from Gracie onto Kirby. So Bad Bones gets the victory and Gracie stands tall at the end of Loaded. But I really enjoyed it. I think in the context of the feud, it doesn't make Kirby look weak because he got double teamed. He just competed in a match, but it makes Gracie look strong. And he looks like he's got the higher ground here because obviously he's got bones on his side. So Gracie's in trouble. You know Kirby, he really wants... To, I like how they keep making references to Kirby really wanting um, the WCBA title back. But Alex Gracie's kind of blocking the road and Alex Gracie thinks that Kirby's a block in the road. So they keep fighting, but they keep thinking each other's a block in the road. I like that. It's really fun, really interesting, and who will go on top, and who will start to fight for belts at WCPW? Who knows? But then we move on to none other than the WCPW Hardcore title match. BT Gun takes on Primate uh, in a hardcore match, because it's for the hardcore title. Uh, but BT Gun and <laughs> Primate. On, on the way down to the ring, BT Gun speaks to Stevie Aaron and says, due to what happened at the start, uh, Primate may have a broken neck, it cannot compete tonight. But it's private, so private comes out of the ring, he's got doctors around him, he's wearing a neck brace. The fact that he obviously had this injured neck going into the match, what would actually happen to private? Would his condition be worse? A couple spots I really enjoyed were when Private launched on the top rope and E.T. Gun connected with his RKO of sorts. Private using a chair shot to the head whilst BT Gun's head was under a bin. They had thumbtacks, right? And they put it both in their, 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 their trunks and they kicked each other in the dick. Now obviously they probably have like really simple padding or something to block the tacks in their in their trunks, but oh that oh, you can't do that to another man. It made it made me cry. Like not literally, I wasn't like in tears, but I was like, you can't do that, man. Cause just imagine that the tacks going into you like oh no, I can't and then towards the end of the match. Primate goes to put BT Gun through a table with the spear. That's not happening. BT Gun counters it with a super kick. And then Primate picks him up. Spike Buster into the table. Spear, one, two, three. Did he get the spear actually? I think he did. But Primate is your new hardcore champion. And I'm going to be honest, I was angry at the booking when I first saw it. I was like, so BT Gun just got beat by Primate again. But in, in the context of what happened in the Pro Wrestling World Cup, this is like the beginning of prestigious downfall and I cannot wait to see what happens. You know, they've risen to the top and it was time for them to go down and I can't wait to see what happens. That was basically it for WCW Loaded this week, uh, August 31st edition of uh, WCW Loaded. Really an awesome show, really sh short. It was about an hour long if you take up the whole Blompier and the recap stuff. About just under an hour long, but the match felt like they got all the time they needed. They felt like they didn't need anything else. Um, obviously, again, they couldn't really show much because this was sh uh, shot on the World Cup Finals night. So I don't know how they're going to get around like, the whole uh, tapings because they taped one at the um, quarter final show. Uh, they taped two in Leeds. Or was lead stacked. I'm, I'm going, I'm going mad. But anyway, they're not loaded taping somewhere. They take two episodes, so we've got three episodes left. I, I like obviously we got another week to fill, so I'm really confused. Um, but anyway, what do you guys think of this week's load? Did you think it was a good enough episode? Uh, I don't think it was my favourite of the return, but I really enjoyed it. But anyway, guys, I'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys all very soon. Goodbye.